Good morning. Uh, today is Trinity Sunday in the year 2020. And my text for today is Greet One Another with a Holy Kiss from 2 Corinthians 13 verse 12. For many people during our COVID-19 experience, a greeting has been a little bit difficult, particularly for those people for whom their normal greeting may have contained some form of touch, uh, a handshake, uh, a hug, or indeed a kiss. Uh, for those to, for whom that uh, touch has been important, they've been keen to look for another form of greeting to convey some sort of affection or welcome. Uh, they've been using the elbow. Uh, sometimes people have put out their, their toe uh, and touched toes. Uh, maybe a slap on the back. Um, I'm tempted to walk around with some, uh, some sanitizing cream and continue to touch and then immediately drag out the sanitizer and, 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 uh, so that we've, we've had our greeting, our normal greeting. And it is somehow right to find appropriate greetings, for they are wonderful indicators of our aspiration uh, of what our future relate for for our future relationships. Uh, in Tanzania, some of that aspiration is wrapped up in the greetings. So it's a very common greeting in Tanzania that as you extend your right hand uh, to shake the hand of the others, you you put your left hand over the forearm of your right. Uh, this is to indicate that there's nothing hidden, no hidden weapon. Uh, you're trying to convey a sense of trustworthiness uh, or, or genuineness, yes, genuineness in the relationship uh, of peace. Uh, sometimes in some cultures, as you extend your hand to shake, uh, the, the hands then don't release, or if they release, they simply get swapped from right to right hand to right to left hand, and for a, a period of time, you might walk around hand in hand. This sense of friendship and kinship built into the relationship. Uh, of course, the uh, the namaste of the Southeast Asian folk, which uh, doesn't involve interpersonal touch, but involves the touch of one hand against the other. And the indication is that as one, per, one hand and the other hand come together, so one person and the other come together in peace and in harmony. It's about unity. And there is no duplicity in this relationship. Um, perhaps as the right hand of the brain and the left hand of the brain come together, there's nothing hidden. Uh, we, of course, as the Namaste has indicated, we can greet very effectively without touch. Uh, a smile or a smiling eye, uh, a waving of a hand, open hands, a bow, a nod, sometimes a chin or a word or the, the tone of our voice. These can do just as well. And so... As we, we reflect on greet one another with a holy kiss during our COVID-19 experience, we are reminded that a, varieties, a variety of symbols can be used to convey that core meaning um, of it's good to see you. Uh, it does not necessarily need, need to be a kiss or a hug or a handshake to convey that I, I am glad to see you. Also, the COVID-19 experience has challenged us to see that the absence of a particular form of greeting does not diminish the relationship. For what was always true, what we have been reminded of perhaps, is that the important ingredient is the action that follows the greeting, whatever form that greeting might take. So what is the symbol that the holy kiss was attempting to convey? And what is the appropriate action expected 
if one were to be true to the holy kiss greeting. At one level, of course, a kiss was a particularly common oriental greeting, regardless of uh, whatever your religious affiliation might have been. It was a greeting which especially indicated that someone was part of the family, extremely welcome in the household. And so it's an entirely appropriate greeting, a kiss, for the Christian community to have adopted. Uh, as in Galatians, St Paul says, Galatians 3 verse 27 and to verse 29, we read that we are now all one in Christ. We have all become children of the same heavenly Father. There is neither now Jew or Greek or slave or free. We are all one in Christ, fellow heirs with Christ of the kingdom of God. And so this is uh, the whole idea of family uh, conveyed within the meaning of the greeting kiss is extremely important. Whether we today uh, greet one another with touch or simply with a nod, within the church, uh, we would want to convey that one another, with one another, we are not just friends, but we are somehow more deeply family because of who, what Christ has done for us in uniting us to God. However, not diminishing this uh, at all, we can safely say that the greeting that St Paul refers to is both this and more. For St Paul doesn't just refer to a, to a kiss, he refers to a holy kiss. And now holiness is a defining attribute of God. And so we need, perhaps particularly when looking at greeting or relationships, we need to look at how the holiness of God is shaped within the persons of the Trinity. You see, at the heart of the Christian of Christian theology of God is a concept of Trinity. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three distinct persons and one nature. From the Trinitarian relationship perspective, the Holy Kiss enlarges the meaning from just the intimacy of family to include the shape of the connections within the family. They are to be holy in the same way that God in his interpersonal relationships of the Trinity are holy. That is always generous and always other person centered. God, his true nature, is characterized not by selfish grabbing, but by an open-handed giving, ever giving, and in receiving or in taking, ever in gratitude to honour and never to diminish the other. So a holy greeting, whether it's a, a kiss or a, a nod, is never to be presumptuous, never self-serving. It is always for the other's good. Also, this holy Trinitarian, Trinitarian relationship uh, is equally shared by all the persons of the Trinity. So if it is to be adopted as a holy greeting for Christians, it can't ever be just to um, our tribe or our denomination or our nation or um, our uh, not just to our tribe or nation or kind, but to all the saints. This was true in the ancient world, of course, as the, the gospel message of God's broad love was proclaimed to all nations and people were baptised into the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So they became not just members of one family, but they were shaped by the unity that they shared 
and the character or the attributes of the of the Trinitarian relationship. Well, this is the th theology in which the holy kiss is said. But like all greetings, it is only holy if it is without duplicity or hypocrisy. No matter how dignified the the kiss, no matter how dignified the the handshake, no matter how intense whatever greeting you have, if behind it is hid the intent to harass or to harm or to abuse, then the greeting, regardless of its form, is meaningless or a dead symbol. It is not holy. To save any holy greeting from becoming meaningless, the person who would name their greeting as holy must conform the whole of their attitude towards the other according to the shape of both the interpersonal generosity within the Trinity, but also the gracious kindness of God towards us as seen in the person of Jesus. One who came alongside us, one who was at meal with us, one who wept with us, one who died for us, one who rose and shared his life with us. He was no mere nod or kiss or bow from this Jesus towards us. If a greeting is to convey the gracious love of God, if it is to convey respect, purity, unity, peace, and a sense of family, if it is to be informed by the holiness of God, then as God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, so our greeting towards one another must be accompanied by actions and words which are holy and gracious and kind towards the other, as today, so tomorrow, and also forever. As he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct, not just in your holy greeting, but in all of your relationship one to another. For, for it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Greet one another with a holy greeting.